morning. Welcome to this day. Uh, we are sitting on the bus, and as you can see, a little weather uh, that we have around us here, and we're about to go home. We have had our entire weekend canceled, and so um, it's unusual for us to be home on a Saturday and Sunday, but I was sitting here thinking about uh, what do we do with this time of rest. The book of 2 Samuel, which is my favorite, uh, Samuel uh, are my favorite books in the Old Testament. They, lead, they read like a movie script. It's very exciting and a lot of uh, drama, a lot of passion, a lot of uh, tragedy and triumph. Reading in verse uh, in chapter seven, verse one. This is after David had, had experienced so much glorious victory, and God had blessed him. He uh, was the king of Israel, and he had defeated the, his enemies. And here it is, chapter seven. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all of his enemies. David is here. He's, he's conquered the enemies of the land. He's now at home, and the Lord had given him rest. What happens a lot of times when we become idle, that's when we are uh, very susceptible and very vulnerable to attacks from the enemy. David got restless. He didn't take the rest of God to use that to build himself, to encourage himself in the Lord. He began to think, well, what can I do? What can I do? And here he says, he, he goes and tells the Nathan, Nathan the prophet, See how I dwell in this house of cedar? But the ark of God dwells within curtains. And Nathan said to the, Nathan said to the king, Go and do all that is in the heart. He wanted to build God a house. Well, God didn't really like that response. He, he basically says through the prophet Nathan, He says, How will you build me a house? I have never dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent an inner tabernacle. You see, the presence of God could not be, he wanted them to understand that it could not be confined to a place, to a location. The presence of God is omnipresent. He dwells in the hearts of men, especially those that believe and follow after him. And so here's God's response. It says, Now therefore, say unto my servant David, he's speaking to Nathan the prophet, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from following sheep to be ruler over my people of Israel. And when I was with thee, I cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more. And as since the time that I command judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thy enemies, also the Lord tells thee that I will make you a house. God was saying, David, you're not going to build me a house. I'm God. I will make you a house. I love that. God is just basically reasserting to David in his time of rest. Hey, don't forget who's God here. You may be king of Israel, but I put you there. I took, I brought you out from following sheep. Don't forget that I'm God and that you are my servant. You are my king. I've appointed you. You're not going to build me a house. I will build you a house. And you know what? That's exactly what happens when we become, sometimes uh, we get to a place of refuge, a place of prosperity, a place of blessing. We begin to, our mind begins to think, you know, we begin to think something of ourselves. You know, look at all I've done. Look at all that I've accomplished. And you begin to look around and you see. And it's really the hand of the Lord that's provided. David began to, with his idle time, he began to think, well, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Really, he should have just been worshiping God. And so David is now forbidden to build this house. God says, no, you will not build this. But here's what he says. He, he says, when thy days will be fulfilled and you will sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. This is a beautiful picture of the sage. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the children of men. But, I love this, verse 15 of chapter 7, but my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever. 
Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. God reminded David of who he was. He was he brought him out from herding sheep to be ruler over Israel. God had brought great victories to the nation of Israel by the hand of David. And even though David uh, displeased God when he began to say, God, it was pride in David's heart that began to say, God, I want to make you a house. And God was reminding him, no, I'll make you a house. And the house that I will build you, I will bless your seed forever and ever, and your throne will be established. Make no mistake about it, I am God. And when David realized this, he became under conviction, he began to worship the Lord, because when we truly see and hear the Lord speaking such powerful words into our lives, here should be our response. Here's what David said. Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that thou hast brought me here? And yet this was yet a small thing in thy sight. O Lord God, but thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come. And then it, and in this manner of man, O Lord God, for thy word's sake and according to thy own heart hast thou done all these great things. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, there is none like thee, There is neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. Our God is God. He has no equal. He has no competition. So if you find yourself snowed in today, keep reminding yourself of who God is. Worship Him. And remember, God cannot be confined to a box. He cannot be confined to a location. He's all-powerful, omnipotent, omniscient God. He is a wonderful God. Let's worship Him today in spirit and truth.